Good afternoon. I want to welcome these leaders for coming in to have this very important discussion um, about some of the most pressing issues of our time. Um, I am Kamala Harris. My pronouns are she and her. I am a woman sitting at the table wearing a blue suit. Let's go, Brandon. Hey. Let's go, Brandon. Hey. Let's go, let's go. Hey. My name is Joel Davis. My pronouns are go after yourself. I am a fat man sitting in a car wearing a leopard print thong and leg warmers. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Maybe I'm not wearing leg warmers or a leopard print thong, but the fat man, he could pull it off. How about that cackling sidekick Medusa, man? How about that? She gets our special kind of stupid award. What do you say a woman is? I believe that everyone can identify for themselves. Okay. Um, do, do you believe then that men can become pregnant and have abortions? Yes. Oh man, you gotta love those loon tunes. You gotta love those loon tunes. Hello everyone, it's Joel Davis with United Medical Transportation Providers Group. You are the broker.com and home care access. And as of the shooting of this video, I am shooting an early morning video. I went to Dunkin' Donuts to get my iced coffee, but now I am driving out to uh, an awesome little farmhouse in upstate New York. Husband and wife are a uh, pastor and they got four daughters that work on the farm and work in their their, their family store. It's just the, the, the quintessential place you just wanna support. So uh, I'm going out there to get my breakfast sandwiches because I support them and I love them and man, they make good food. And uh, because it's early morning hours, you gotta forgive the, uh, the sun and the glare and you gotta forgive me for rambling because I'm gonna be all over the place. The reason I gotta do this is I gotta maximize time. Um, so many of the uh, emails you guys send. Love it, we love you guys. Everyone I'm working with, love you guys. Um, Dan, Don, and Charlie, for those of you who don't know, they, they when they're working with you guys and exchanging emails, if there's something they think is uh, a good little nugget that I should use for content for a future video, they'll kind of put that in a separate um, a folder for me. Likewise, when I'm working with you, if there's something of interest, I'll put it there as well. So I was looking at that this morning before I left, and um, man, there's just so much that I'm like, all right, you know what? Again, it takes time to shoot those videos, and, and again, time is the greatest commodity. We have got to maximize our time. We are not getting any younger, and uh, we gotta we gotta make that money so we can focus on what's most important in life, which is number one, God. Number two, your spouse, your kiddies, the family, and then business. But it just so happens that business funds the whole show. So for those of you who don't know, if you're new to the channel, I am a biblical capitalist. I am a biblical capitalist. And uh, this is not a user-friendly channel for everybody. Because if you are one of those virtue signaling knee benders uh i am not your guy i'm not your guy good metric good metric is if you're one of those virtue signaling knee benders and one of those uh the modern day groomers or here's a good metric if you if you like to if you like to drink out of paper straws unsubscribe unsubscribe i am not one of these politically correct people that uh, are going to tell you what you want to hear I will tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. I'm not going to be one of these uh, gurus, gurus that are posing in front of uh, exotic cars and uh, their private jets, telling you that you start start your NEMT business for eight hundred dollars and you're going to be a millionaire in twelve months. No, you're not. Or you're going to make ten thousand dollars a month off one home care client. I promise you, you're not. Unless you are literally robbing them blind, which is grand larceny. 
it is absolutely impossible you're not going to do that. You could argue there's a chance if you are a skilled medical care, home health care agency, maybe you could, but even then you're not going to get that because someone who requires that much work needs to be in a legitimate facility. You're not going to ever make 10, 10 grand a month off a single client. Anyone suggesting that, I talked about that in a previous video, I shared information that is absolute lunacy. I mean, skullduggery, absolute hijinks, robbery, theft, run. Again, I told you, I'm, I'm going to ramble all throughout this video because I was looking at some of the, my, my folders there early this morning uh, in my email. And uh, I'm like, all right, man, I know I don't have time to make a video in my office. So I'm just going to do it. I'm going to get on the road and I'm going to make, uh, make this video. So I'm going to be all over the place because there's a lot of things to discuss. So, man, where do I start? So first and foremost, I'll try to stay on point talking about these crazy gurus that I encourage you, please be very careful I've always said, be careful of what you put in your mind. Be careful of who you listen to, things like that. Oh, Joel, you think you know it all? I'm not saying I know it all, but man, I do know a lot. And we do have the, the pleasure and the opportunity to work with a lot of people that, man, we continue to see and, uh, and learn a lot and literally have our, our finger on the pulse around the country with so many different people. And um, I'll give you a classic example. Let me, let me start by giving you a classic example. We get this client provider who retained our services for, I'll, I'll be working with them for NEMT. I haven't started with them yet. This is a, a good dude, hardworking dude, all American dude. Uh, his, uh, he just had a conference call. He paid for a conference call with Marty and Jenny because he's launching his um, home care agency. And um, so Marty and Jenny said, hey, Jenny, can you do me a favor and take a look at this guy's contract? And basically, long, 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 long story short, this guy is the all-American success story that you want to support. You want to see this guy be successful. He found inspiration for starting his home care agency when his nephew years ago was unfortunately involved in a tragic car accident, had brain damage, physical trauma, wheelchair bound. So he moved in with his brother to help care for his nephew. I mean, this is like, that's the type of story that, man, you want to see these people succeed. You know, this is a story you want to see him over overcome the tragedy and, and be successful and everything. So Marty and Ginny hit me up, say, hey, Jenny, can you take a look at this contract? This guy spent $20,000. Now, look, is 20, 20 grand a lot of money in the whole wide scope of life? No, but it's a big nut. And especially when you're going to pay for a full year of coaching and that person pretty much doesn't do anything. He's at the 10th month pretty much no further ahead than where he started 10 months ago so reaches out to marty and jenny and they're like man this is this is not a good spot so anyways i look at this contract now for those of you who know me i'm not an attorney you could argue i should have been when i was at west point i was a pre-law major and if i never got into the entrepreneur game maybe i would have been an entrepreneur uh, i'm sorry maybe i would have been a, an attorney but um because i like all that legal stuff Anyway, so you guys know I'm a stickler when it comes to contracts and service agreements. And for those of you who do that, do the old, the old cut and paste trick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go online. I'm gonna Google contracts. I'm gonna take from this, take from that. Understand when you do that, don't think that an experienced person doesn't know that. So like when you do your ghetto cut and paste trick, and then you submit it to a facility, understand. That facility, they have a legal department. When their legal department looks at this, it screams and it signals BITCH. As in, they know they got a dingbat on the hook, so they're gonna throw you in the BITCH bin because they're gonna browbeat you. And that's exactly what, you know, it's the type of mentality of a Medicaid broker. They know that, they know that, they know when they got a dingbat on the hook and they can pretty much own you and do whatever they want. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But going back to this uh, client provider, I fear that he wasted his money because again, he's 10 months into this and this guy is doing nothing to help him. And he, he, and I'm just, suspe I haven't talked to this guy yet. Again, he retained my services for one-on-one -on -one for NEMT. Uh, we haven't started working yet together, but when I was looking at this contract, I went and I checked out the guy uh, who we paid the 20 grand to. And it is the typical sales page, get rich quick, 
Uh, he takes the pictures in front of the um, the exotic cars, the private jets, talks all that hip hop flash, and you're gonna be rich in 12 months. This is that. It is such a fake, a phony, and a farce. One of our media guys, he's actually from Philly, and he was telling us recently, uh, a couple weeks back, how there is literally, literally a place down in Philly, it's a marketing agency or company or something, where literally, you can pay money to go take pictures in front of exotic cars or do whatever type of setup, green screen stuff you want. You can go take pictures in front of uh, coming off uh, off a private jet. You could play that fake and phony game. <laughs> Dude, there's a reason why I'm wearing a leopard print thong and lag warmers sitting in my truck because boom rich free. I don't need to play that stupid game. This is why I don't need to be politically correct because of Boom Rich Free. But let me be absolutely clear. There is no get rich quick in any MT, in home care, uh, in any business. I don't care what, if you want to be successful in any business, I mean, there is no get rich quick. You want to get rich quick, go hit the lottery or something like that. There's no get rich quick. Let me be absolutely clear. The reason why I need to be more cautious about the things I say online is because so many of these gurus, they don't know their ASS from a hole in the ground, they'll steal all, all our stuff, and they regurgitate it, and leads to nothing but catastrophe for uh, for these unsuspecting newbies. And then after they've wasted all this money, then they come to us, and it is a pain in the butt to play the cleanup duty, because why? Time. Time is the most important commodity, the most important variable, and we're playing cleanup duty. This is why so many of you, so many of you guys send us emails. Hey, can you call me? Hey, can we talk on the phone? Uh, hey, can you call me back? Hey, can you have Joel call me? Listen, as much as we would love to engage and talk to all of you, we just don't have the time to sit on the phone and tell, because people will contact us and say, hey, can you can you call me? And they'll ask the most elementary questions that just take time. And then people, once they have you on the phone, they just want to talk to you forever. You cannot do that. You cannot do, did you, it's like, have you even read Joel's ebook yet? Have you even gone through the website? And they'll ask questions like, oh, well, how do I start? Oh, there's no one sentence answer to that. Uh, yeah, I want private contracts. How do I do that? You got, you, you, <laughs> People get so enamored in chasing shiny objects, they have no concept of time. It's just incredible. Again, I told you I was going to ramble. I'm going to be all over the place. But anyways, going back to, to this client provider, um, your heart goes out to someone like that. He spent this money... And he's still, he's still pressing forward as he should because the opportunity is there. But I encourage you to be very, very, very uh, diligent, practice discernment in who and what you listen to and where you spend your money. When many of you, when you contact us, we tell you, before you even spend any money, watch as much of Joel's content as you can study his material before you spend any money, before you purchase any vehicles, before before you sign any agreement, before you sign any agreement, study that material. But you you, you, you feel bad. So this, this guy is in an unfortunate spot. Is there opportunity? Huge opportunity. But he's already starting at a loss because he just wasted all this money and even more so, he wasted all this time. 10 months, the guy has like two two, two more months on this on this, on this this contract, if you wanna call it that. It's so laughable, it's embarrassing. I could write a doctor dissertation just on this, this, this contract. 10 months have been wasted and got nothing on 20 grand. The list goes on and on. I got this other client provider. Here, I'll give you another example. Here's a different one. Let me jump ahead. So I got this other client provider, followed this guru, guru online. It's one of those guys that tells you, oh yeah, just go get it, go get it, go get a, a used used car with 250,000 miles on it, 300,000 miles on it. We'll pay 5,000 for it. Well, this guy paid him money, paid him money to learn from, learn, learn this stupid advice. 
So he's thinking, okay, well, guess what? I got about 30 grand right now. So go big or go home. Rather than starting with a, a used vehicle for five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000, I got this 30 grand. But why not start with more? I'll go get four vans. And that's what he did. I think he spent twenty-seven or 29000 more than the other. I know it was one of those odd numbers. Spent twenty-seven or $29,000. Got four vehicles. Like I said, 250, 300,000 miles, whatever. Absolute crap. We got to sell them. We got to ditch them. Why? Because he can't even get them insured. Two things. Two things. Number one, he can't even get them insured. No one will underwrite those because of the age of the vehicles, the mileage, the high mileage, probably the condition too. He said he got four, he fought, he paid this guy thousands of dollars to get the stupidest advice. They fill you up with that hopium and all that crap. Gets four vehicles, can't even get them insured. And because he can't get them insured, he can't even get operating authority where he is uh, in his county. You can't have a vehicle, a new vehicle added to your fleet roster. You can't have a new vehicle added to your fleet roster that's more than 10 years old. Now, let's say it's already part, it's already added on your fleet. It's already part of your fleet roster. Then it can age beyond 10 years. Two different things. So clearly understand the difference. So you cannot add a new vehicle that's more than 10 years old. Well, guess what? All four of the vehicles that this guy thought, okay, I'm following this advice. I spend $27,000, $29,000. I get four used vehicles, 250, 300,000 miles. I'm gonna grind them up, crunch them out for a few years, get new ones. Guess what? All garbage, absolute garbage. This is the type, like, and, 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 the, and the ones, nah, I love this, man. This other one we work with. Here, here was the marketing strategy. Here was the marketing strategy. Take a copy of your business cards and fax them to social workers. Think that thing through. Still, I'm, I'm amazed that people are still using fax machines, but think that thing through. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take uh, take a copy of my business card. Maybe write a little note on it and fax it. Fax it over to social workers. They're gonna be pissed off that you just wasted their ink ribbon, their paper, and they take it and throw in the garbage. I mean, this is the insanity that's out there. And the tragedy of it is there's so much opportunity, especially, so, so here's one thing that everybody has. Everyone has a problem with labor right now. NEMT providers, I got uh, home care providers. You even take Marty and Ginny. Marty and Ginny, uh, again, I talk to them all, all, every day. Okay, e e even yesterday we were having this conversation that they are, they because Marty and Ginny still own and operate their home care agency for over 20 years. They are constantly being solicited to take on more work. But even then, they're shorthanded because it's a labor issue. Everyone is shorthanded. But here's on the flip side where it does work to your favor is um, a lot of these facilities, they gotta outsource transportation because they can't afford to in-house it anymore. They can't afford to in-house it anymore for a variety of reasons, but one of them is labor. So they're all short staff, so there's more opportunity. So got this one client provider, great dude, hardworking dude, been in the game for a couple of years, uh, been doing a lot of mileage distance work, loving it. Uh, but I told him, I said, listen, we, we, especially if we're going to sell this thing in the future and prior to that, we're going to, we want to expand. We're, we're looking to uh, purchase an existing business across the border into a different state. Um, Hardworking dude, love him. So I said, look, man, we have got to conquer our own backyard. So we got to really conquer this local stuff too, because he's sitting on the gold mine. He was doing all this distance stuff and was just... This is stuff. I love this and stuff. The mileage racks up money, 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 money. Love it. But we got to conquer our backyard too. So, um, cause we got to prepare for that future sale. So we end up finding a, a perfect setup of this facility, this other transportation provider for a variety of reasons, just that they don't know their ASS from a hole in the ground. They're going out of business. We swoop in, we take over this contract. 
loving it. But this facility, this facility wants my transportation provider to do some work that we're not licensed to do. And I'm not gonna tell you what that is. And no, it's not necessarily a stretcher. I'm not gonna tell you what that work is because again, all these whack job gurus, all these experts, all these experts who are still out there driving as independent operators, this and that, but now they're all writing books and making videos. And they want you to learn. They want they want you to learn from them how to grow and scale. And they're still driving. Whatever, man. If I want to learn to become a multi-millionaire, I want to learn from a multi-millionaire. I don't want to learn from someone who's still working for a paycheck. I'm just going to be honest. Same 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 scenario. Anyway, so this facility is trying to get uh, my guy to do to do this this work that we're not licensed to do. Now, could we do it? Yes. Could we do it their way? Yes, but it's not an ideal situation for us. It's really not a big deal in terms of rules or regulations. There's definitely some gray area, but um, this is a classic example where huge opportunity, huge opportunity, but we're actually going to use state rules and regulations to our advantage. We're going to use our lack of insurance in terms of we're not insured to do certain things they're requesting us to do. Now, can we do it? Physically, yes. Could we do it and not be in trouble uh, with the rules and regulations according to the state? Technically, yes, because there's some gray area there. But if we perform that work, it's not to our advantage logistically. So we are actually leveraging this is a kind of a unique situation that you don't see too often. This is where you actually leverage the state rules and regulations and insurance requirements to your advantage to put you in a better spot for contracts. I mean, you don't see stuff like this all the time. And again, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna share the details because too many Loon Tunes cannibalize their stuff when they try to regurgitate and claim as their own. It all does lead to trouble and turmoil, which ultimately leads to more work for us, and we can't do that. But um, huge opportunity, huge opportunity with these facilities uh, because they're, they're shorthanded too. Now, now here, here's the other thing. I, I, I know uh, for those of you who've been with me for a long time, you know that I, I make fun of all these, these, you know, all these, everyone's a social media influencer. Everyone's a social media influencer. And again, I'm not that guy. I'm not that politically correct guy. Everyone wants to go on LinkedIn, LinkedIn and pontificate. I can't, st oh God, it sends shears up my spine. Everyone goes to, to LinkedIn and they all pontificate. Well, you know, these are challenging times and, and we need to foster our climate uh, to develop our leaders. Uh, we need leadership, leadership, and we need to cultivate. Let me, let me be absolutely clear with you. Let me be absolutely clear with you. You're in, uh, pick a place let's say let's say south texas and you're paying a driver 11 dollar an hour let's say you're in uh, another end of the spectrum you're in massachusetts you're paying a driver 15 dollars an hour pick any place you want these drivers these drivers as much as you love them they're paycheck to paycheck it is what it is i mean there, there could be some different circumstances you know people are retired an older guy he's retired he worked here and there retired so maybe he gets a little pension maybe even a little social security and works part-time for you okay maybe that's a little different situation but that's not the norm people are hurting people are struggling and they're living paycheck to paycheck you and you as business owners i know you see it i know you feel it you feel it at the pump you see it when you go buy groceries inflation and taxation is killing people despite what the the, the sleepy creep with dementia patient with the cackling sidekick Medusa says, how about they came out, you know, not a long time ago and they said, oh, this was zero inflation, zero inflation. Then why are we passing this absolutely moronic in, uh, inflation reduction bill? Why, if it's zero, the zero inflation, why are we passing that? But that's the topic for another day. I know, I know, I know, I know. If you listen to my girl, great Paula, what does she say? Forget his political views and all that. If you can get you past can just that, get man. Past my politics. We get so many people, so many people, so many people got buyer's remorse. You're hurting. But here's my point. And again, I know I'm all over the place. I love it. I absolutely love it. 
you got drivers who are going paycheck to paycheck, hour to hour, and they're good. They're working hard. You love them. And you get this laughable horse, S-H-I-T, fluffy, feel-good crap. And people, whoa, there's a tough guy. That's a that's a BTG. That's a big tough guy right there. Oh, look at him in his truck. I'm driving slow, but man, I feel so inadequate now because that guy speeded around me. I feel so I feel so inadequate. That male that was male toxicity. I, I feel I need to find a space a safe space right now. I feel very vulnerable, very very exposed right now to that male toxicity. Uh, I don't even know what 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 gender are you? What gender are you? Oh, these people, they just don't know. What are your pronouns? Excuse me. Excuse me, Mr. Truck Driver. What are your pronouns? As I digress. I love Loon Tunes, man. Again, I told you. If you're new to this channel, I'm, if you're new to this channel and you're you require safe space. I'm sure. I'm sure you already checked out by now. Because the fat man ain't your flavor. If you're a knee bender, I, I'm sure you already bounced. But anyways, going back to my point of these people are paycheck to paycheck. Do they really have time for all this leadership training? Oh, we we need to foster. These are challenging times. Yet you voted for sleepy creeper dementia patient with a cacting psychic Medusa. No, these are challenging times, and, and we as leaders, uh, we've got to we've got to foster an environment of leadership development to to culture and to train. Dude, people are fighting, scratching, and clawing for the next freaking dollar so they can pay rent. You know, I, I saw, read some statistics, something like the one in five people aren't even don't even have money to pay for next month's rent. Or something along those lines. I mean, how about how about everybody in the in, in the real estate? How's that real estate market hitting you? How about those interest rates? It's absolutely crazy. That's why. That's why. Again, I'm I'm about to go off up in this joint, man. I'm gonna jump all over the place. If you, if you guys want to check out, check out. But all these people get rich quick. Oh, start start a medical transportation for eight hundred. How oh, I started with eight hundred dollars. You're gonna be a millionaire in 12. Are you insane? Are you insane? Look, man. When I started my business, I tell people all the time, man. When I started my NEMT business with my first company, I started that. I was such a naive D bag. Such a stupid, naive D bag. Look, I went through West Point. I was a pre law major, minor in system engineering. And I could have gone through West Point 100 years. I would never would have learned anything about entrepreneurship like I did. I could learn how to blow things up, shoot people, kill people, all that kind of good stuff. But I was never going to learn about business. Learned my, my first business, man. I started out, man, huge training ground. But I also, I learned a lot. I also made a lot of money after I figured out a lot of things. One of them was when I first got my first contract. That was what really turned the corner. When I got my first contract, my, my competitors, they didn't know their ASS from a hole in the ground. They were in the market a lot longer than me. They couldn't figure it out. Fat man did. That first contract was technically with the three facilities. We had two local facilities, uh, UHS, United Health Services, but then they also had a facility about 45 minutes away. That was the third one. We would travel back and forth, not as much to that one, but the other two facilities local, we were in it constantly. Getting that contract was, was the big break because not only was I making real money, I was able to buy my first house, buy my mother's house, start buying rental properties, things like that. Rental properties, that's a man, that's a that's a unique experience within itself. But anyways, um all these people with their get rich quick, it ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna happen. That's why I say this is a process. Look, my wealth, my wealth, look, boom rich free. The reason why I can come on here and act like an a-hole and, and a clown and and speak stupid a lot of times, joke around, it's because of boom rich free. I don't need to worry if someone doesn't like this cash out I don't care you're not hearing me say oh subscribe hit the like button we got to beat the algorithms because I don't care the people who are important are gonna watch this the people we work with they're gonna watch stuff like this so 
can you do this when you're going to go meet with the facility? No, when you go meet with the facility, you got to play the game. You got to be politically correct. Hey, but once you get the boomer, it's free. It don't matter. At that point in time, you're a creator. You do what you want. That's why you got to laugh at these clowns that are going out there, taking their pictures uh, uh, in front of their, their exotic cars and their, their flashy backdrop. So look at me on my TED Talks, and it's, and it's a green screen. Like I say, you go to Philly and you can pay this company, whatever it is, and you can take pictures in front of um, uh, your, uh, your your private jet. So look at me in a suit coming off a private jet. Are you such a... What a douchebag. What a douchebag. Like, how, how do you say... All right, all right here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do, team. We're going we're, we're gonna to get dressed like this. We're going to get dressed like that. We're gonna bring, don't forget, hey, don't forget to bring the jewelry. Don't forget to bring the jewelry. And you set it up. It's like, how do you do that? And then, and then you put this stuff online, and you tell people, uh, you, you you sell them on this this total BS bill of goods. I mean, how do you do that? Like you like you you know you're full of crap. Your your peeps who you just did this little nonsense shenanigans with, they gotta know you're full of crap. It's it's crazy. It, 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 I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna tell you this. I'm going to get in trouble, but I don't care. Why? Boom, rich free. Um, I believe that a lot of people will sign up with somebody for cultural reasons. This person, oh, they're the same color. They're the same religion. Oh, they speak the same language. Oh, we, we came from the same area. Oh, they, they, they were born over in overseas in that country. And oh, look at me, my family of origin is from there. So they're, they're inclined to, to sign up with that person. Now, it was like eight, I don't know, six, eight, ten months ago. In one of the videos, I, I read one of the hater emails where someone said that I was a, a racist. So I know that when I say, hey, do not sign up with someone just because you share the same culture as them. Just because you're the same color as them. You're female, and oh, look at her. She's female. Oh, look at her. She's female. She says that I can get a client for $10,000 a month. $10,000 a month. No, you can't. Oh, but look. But look, it's a sisterhood. Now, I know I'm going to get in trouble. I know I'm going to get in trouble. Come on, sister. Come on, sister. A lot of you, a lot of you, a lot of you are going to send me your hate emails. You know, well, well I'm a female, and I'm black, and, and how dare you say that? Look, I'm just telling you. Oh, it's a sister. Oh, she, she's my sister. Dude, let me tell you something. You cannot make $10,000 a month off a single client unless you're literally robbing them and the family. It's not possible. So stop trying to follow the get rich quick just because the same, well, I mean, how many sexes? I was gonna say maybe male or female, but we don't even know. How do you even define woman anymore? We, how do you, I don't even know. How do you how do you define female? I don't know. We got Supreme Court justice now who came and defined female. So, but you don't follow someone just because they're the same culture. The, the only thing here's the here's the thing, man. The only color you should care about is green. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. And 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 beyond content of character. As MLK would say, is character important? Yes, absolutely. But I believe what goes hand in hand with, 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 with content and character is competence. Don't pay money to someone just because they're of the same uh, gender. And again, I don't even know because there's so many different genders now. We don't know. I mean, what does the science say? I don't know. I mean, there's a special kind of stupid out there. But don't be beguiled uh, by the get rich quick. You're not going to get rich quick. Don't be beguiled to sign up with them because they're of the same gender, the same culture, the same religion, the same color, the same language. Competence is key. Can they get you? I always say we got to get our people to green. Can he? Oh, oh, whoa. I was going to say, can he or she, but I don't know. Whoa. Can he, she, Z, be 
Lee, Key, It, get you to green, help you make money. I won't, I will be gender, I'm gonna be gender neutral. Can It, is It competent enough to get you to green, making money, so that you're not gonna get taken advantage of, like my client provider who I was telling you about with the home care, Look, folks, don't allow people to treat you like a naive B-I-T-C-H. Well, don't empower them to think like, hey, man, I got a ding bat on the hook. I'm going to take this money. Again, this is what the brokers do. When you take a look and you see my client provider in the communist state of California, when you got call the car demanding if you don't dot the I and cross the T they're going to dock you money if you are not time stamping every single minute of, throughout the entire uh, uh, transportation they're not going to pay you now think about here's what you have to understand here's what they do here's what they do and if I already said this forgive me I told you I was going to ramble I'm driving to go get my breakfast sandwiches here's what they're going to do these brokers rely on you being naive. They, re they rely on you being so busy. They rely on being able to wear you down and, and force you to make a mistake. Here's how they do it. Let's say, let's say, think about how easy it is from their perspective. Let's say you did $1,000 of business with them for a day. Let's say you did 500. Let's say you did 500 bucks for a broker today. And if you look at this, call the car, and again, Logisticrat, now called Motive Care, had to change the name because they had to rebrand because the brand sucks, or MTM. If they can get you to slip up, you didn't dot that I, you didn't cross that T, you forgot, you, you performed the transport, you did it successfully, the, the patient loved you, the driver did it well, you paid for the gas, you had the wear and tear. But you didn't get that timestamp. You didn't put down the time when he arrived for pickup. You didn't put down the time when he uh, went in, in transit. You didn't put down the time when he uh, uh, went to pick him up. Whatever whatever, whatever that I, dotting that I and cross that T is, they're going to say to themselves, okay, look, here's the deal. We're not going to pay you for this one trip. And let's say that for easy math, I'd say it's 50 bucks. You just made $500 today with them, 1,000, pick any number. But we're not going to pay you for that 50 bucks. And they're going to make you chase it. They're gonna make you chase it. Now it's two weeks later. They're gonna two weeks later. They're gonna notify you and say, oh, "We're not gonna pay for this one from two weeks ago." But you've already been chasing. You've been chasing all these other trips so hard. You're gonna say, "All right, you know what? Screw it. We don't have time." You might chase it in the early stages. Oh, I, I need this money. But then they're gonna give you more. They're gonna give you more. And you're gonna perform these low margin, low hanging fruit trips, and you're gonna forget about that fifty bucks. Well, let's say that happens once a week. Well, that 50 bucks is 200 bucks a month. Now, again, is 200 bucks a month a lot of money? No, not a lot of money. But 200 bucks a month is 2,400 bucks a year. Those are car payments. That's money that should be in your retirement account, which by the way, how are those, entire, how, how are those retirement accounts working out right now? <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. I love it, man. All you with the buyer's remorse, y'all voted for the uh, for the sleeper creepy dementia patient with the cackling sidekick Medusa, man. Everyone is just getting crunched right now. That's why you got to get boom rich free, man. Anyways, going back to the broker. So the broker knows, the broker knows if I could steal 200 bucks a month off you, because you're going to be so busy. You're not going to have time for the administrative tasks to stay on point to keep chasing that $50. But that's 2,400 bucks a year. And let's say they got more. Let's say they got more from you. And they did it to two providers, four providers, 10 providers. Pick any number you want, run the numbers. Those are W's in the win column for the broker. Those are L's in the loss column 
for you and the transportation providers. This is what they do. This is what they rely on. They, they rely on you being dumb, down, and stupid because it adds to their profit margin and detracts from yours. Again, multiply this out across multiple providers and it is huge margin for the brokers. And again, they can give with the right and take with the left. Hey, in a previous video I shared where Call the Car offered my client provider, they're paying, they're paying 10 cents additional mile. They increase, inf gas is doubled since he bought the business last year. Gas is doubled since he bought the business last year. And Call the Car is increasing 10 cents a mile reimbursement. Dude, it's insanity. It's insanity. The way they treat people like a, a B-I-T-C-H, a, a naive B-I-T-C-H. Oh, man. Can you tell I get animated by this stuff? I get animated by this stuff because so many of you I mean, so many of you who we work with, man, you are the all-American dream. I understand. You are under attack. You are under attack. Did you see... I mean, look, I, I talked about it in a previous newsletter. Do you see the IRS hired 87,000 new agents? And they're armed. They're armed. 87,000 IRS agents more than doubles the current size of the IRS. And they're arming them. Why? I mean, they're teaching these people to go out there and, like, arrest me. Now, and are they going after the Uber rich? I saw some, 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 something. I don't know where I saw it. it was like they said something like there's, there's eight hundred, like seven hundred and eighty, you know, close to eight hundred thousand. You know, it wasn't eight hundred, but it was somewhere in that ballpark. There's like eight hundred, eight hundred uh, billionaires in the U.S. There was something like I don't even know what the number was. There was like x tens of thousands of millionaires. Do you think that 87,000 87, is like, that's more than the average college football stadium or more than the average um, NFL stadium? These are new agents that are armed. I mean, they're telling you, they're showing you. Do you think they're really going to go after the rich, the people who, because look, Come after me with all your arts and stuff. First thing I'm doing is I'm going to hire an, an, an army of attorneys. Why would I not? Now, good news is my stuff is tight as it is. So that's awesome. Have at it. But first thing I'm going to do is get legal representation. You, the newbie, the guy who is uh, starting your business, running your business. You've had it a couple years. Guess what? You're being crunched out by by a call to car, the logisticrat now called Motive Care because they had to change the name to rebrand because the brand sucks. You're making slim margins here, slim margins there. Whatever your business is, regard, look at some of their videos. They're targeting lawn care businesses. They're going to come after you, the small business owner, because they are systematically working to crush the middle class. Don't worry about the poor. The poor is all, I mean, the poor, they're getting increased benefits. The poor, is, the, the poor is good. Joel, you're so insensitive. Look, I, I'm being practical. You got to be practical. You got to be practical. You got to be, uh, you have to have a strong sense of self-awareness. For you, for your business, this is why I can't, I cannot stress to you enough. I mean, the, the, the ridiculous situations that we see. I'm driving slow because I'm coming up close to where I got to get my breakfast sandwiches because the fat man's got to eat. But I want to make sure I finish up my, my conversation with you. As, we, as, as we've had this journey together this morning, me with my pronouns, sitting here with my leopard print thong, and leg warmers, our time together. You've got to have a good sense of self-awareness of where you are with your business. I know, I trust me, I, I've said it before, I'll continue to say it again. 
I'm not that guy that's gonna give you the warm, fluff and fuzzy. Because look, here's what these gurus do. Here's what these gurus do. They're gonna tell you the story. Everything, everything sounds so good. So Mary Poppins, here's the story. Here's the story, here's the situation. Start your medical transportation company. Help people, you're helping people. You get to go help Mrs. Smith and, and people forgot about Mrs. Smith and you get to go help her and take her out of the nursing home and take her to her doctor appointment and they're gonna love you and, and the family's gonna call you again. And you're, you're, you're helping people. Everyone's book, everyone's book, everyone's book, everyone's video is all about the feel good fluff. Oh, feel so good about yourself. And you should, those stories are all true and you're legitimately helping people. You're giving back to the community. Yes, become involved in your community. Help this, don't lead to that, do that, all that kind of, it's all, but it's, it's all good, but it's also all fluff, it's all crap. Your margins are tight. If you're doing, if you don't have the right business model, your margins are tight. And when you go out of business, there's no more warm and fuzzies because you ain't helping anybody. If you think there's going to be a, a collective outpouring by the community to shower you with money to sustain your business and put profit back in you, it ain't going to happen. So these laughable BS gurus that people are falling uh, prey to, vulnerable to, sucker to, it's all crap. You ain't going to get rich quick can you get rich yes but it's a process and you got to enjoy the process can you make a million dollars a year your business may generate a million dollars a year but out of all the people i'm working with right now i got a probably four people four people who literally make one million dollars a year they're multi seven figure businesses doing well a lot of private pay contracted work um I probably have four people who make a million dollars a year off their NEMT business. Now I have many people who have seven figure businesses, but they're not all making, taking home, netting a million dollars a year. I got other people who are making a million dollars a year because they have multiple businesses, multiple businesses and collectively their portfolio is a million dollars. Yes, plenty of those. That's why I say your NEMT business, your home care business, your broker business, they all need to be part of your portfolio. They all need to be part of your portfolio. It shouldn't be your only business. You shouldn't be a, 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 a one hit wonder, a one trick pony. You should have multiple businesses. So, be conscious, be weary, be cautious of who you listen to, how you listen to them, because people are going to feed you crap. And they're going to, oh, oh, it's, it's, you're going to help Mrs. Smith. Yes. But if your business goes under, you can't help people. Now, I know, I know, I know. Joel, you just keep rambling. You don't shut up because there's a lot to say. Go to your conventions. Go to the, there's go to the convention. Get your lanyard. Go to the go to the breakout session. Again, I cannot stress this enough. I cannot stress this enough. When you go and you look at all these conventions, I need you to go look at all the sponsors. Look who's in attendance. Look at the brokers who come and sponsor it. Look at the speakers. What do they all encourage you to do? Become a compliant sheep. Build your business to cater to the compliant. The, be, be compliant, build your business so that it caters to the compliant, i.e. the brokers. Do as you're told. If you come, we'll give you more trips. If you come, we'll get you cheaper insurance. Dude, I got people who laugh at that. They'll, oh, I, they'll never do they'll never do broker work they'll never do Medicaid work and they get bagged to we're not doing that we let our competitors do that and then we go over here and we do all this why? because they can because the work is there because they're because they're smart because they're strategic let your competitors and here's here's one thing and again man things just flow like honey man I know I'm all over the place but hey man it flows like honey one thing that hurts us, can you go out and buy a lot of businesses? Right now, you can pick up a lot of good businesses, a lot of good assets. Uh, one thing that hurts the insurance industry is, though, 
these newbies, they come in, they come out, they come in, they come out. And that hurts, hurts the overall industry for insurance. Now, there comes a point in time that when you do get your fleet big enough, I would argue if you are paying around, maybe your minimum should probably be around 150. If you're paying around 150 for insurance, it's time for you to get your own insurance captive. Now, years ago, our goal was to create an insurance captive for UMTPG, but what we quick, quickly realized is it's like trying to hurt cats. It's tr like trying to get hurt to hurt cats. Years ago, when we started the UMTPG, United Medical Transportation Providers Group, one of our goals and visions was to create an insurance captive to protect our people and, and bring down premiums for our people, for active members. But it's like trying to herd cats. So that's why when you see all of this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of bring some things together here for you. When you see all these advertisements, come to the convention, get your lanyard, go to your breakout sessions. Oh, look at Ralph, look at Ralph from Logisticrap, now now called Motive Care, because we, they, we had to change our name because well, our brand sucks, so we gotta rebrand. You get to listen to Ralph, and he's gonna talk about the topic of blah, blah, blah. Oh, it feels so good, look at us. You know, that, look at the national accreditation. We got this national accreditation. I gotta, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna be so, so flipping ass with you. I do a ton of contracts. I work with a ton of people and buying and selling their businesses. Not one single time. That was now. Maybe it'll hit, it, hit me in the future. I like to say I've pretty much seen it all. Once in a blue moon, and those blue moons are very infrequent. Well, I see something that's kind of new. I wasn't suspecting. But not one single time in any of the contracts, any of the service agreements, any of the negotiations we've done, not one single time have I seen anything where it said, well, are your drivers accredited? Well, I'm not sure. Hmm, I'm not sure we should move forward because uh, your drivers don't seem to be uh, nationally accredited by the national da 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 da. It, it, it's, it's a laughable joke. Again, your drivers are working from paycheck to paycheck, do you think they really care about that? Now, does that mean you don't wanna have high standards? Of course you need to have high standards in your business. Regardless of your business, you gotta have high standards. Do you wanna hire hard? I mean, relatively speaking, yes. You wanna find the good people. You wanna find the right people. You wanna keep them, you wanna retrain them, you wanna give them opportunity. But that doesn't mean you gotta go on LinkedIn and oh, well, these are challenging times. I mean, and we need to foster climate. Say, save all that pompous, self-grandizement nonsense and fluffy crap for social media. Uh, those are for people who aren't serious about making money. They're more more serious about being a social media influencer. That's why they don't talk like me. That's why they don't talk like me and I can say whatever I want. So all these national accreditation horse crap nonsense, your drivers, your people, your caregivers are paycheck to paycheck. Help them be the best they can be. Pay them the best that you can. But everyone has got to make money. You don't have time, money, or effort to waste with non-essential uh, crap or, or national accreditations. None of them exist. It's all made up, fictitious crap. It is shiny objects that distract you and waste your flipping money. Absolutely waste your money. And so many people like... Here's another little bit of topic. I'm just gonna throw this out there because so many people, they contact us. They want us to get involved with selling their business. Oh, I wanna sell my business or I'd like to buy this business. And they think we're gonna work for free. Are you insane? Are you insane? Or like people are just so unrealistic. They, they'll say they brought in $400,000. We, we, we literally had this example. Guy, guy. Dude makes four hundred thousand. Look, is four hundred thousand dollars a lot of money for a new business? Okay, you know, a couple years into it, okay, that's we're in, we're on the right trajectory. That's awesome. But dude, I'd like to sell. You listen to these other I was slap blank. You listen to these other slaps. They actually led this dude to believe that his four hundred four hundred thousand dollar a year business. That he could sell it for 2.5 million. Are you flipping insane? Come on. 
Come on. Dude. If, folks, please be weary of who you listen to and what you put in your mind. If you're going to retain someone's services and help you, ask yourself, A, can they get me to green? Are they competent enough? Can they help me sell my business in the future? Because I promise you, I don't care if you're manufacturing widgets. You're not going to have a $400,000 a year business and sell it for $2.5 million. It's not going to happen. And then the other thing is, the other thing is, my people, me, we don't work for free. And I'm not taking your word for it. So if you want us to help you sell your business, the first thing we have to do is do a business valuation. Well, I'm not going to pay for that. Well, then don't. Well, then don't. Then continue to have a business that you're struggling in or you're not sure what you're going to do with it. You don't know what your exit strategy is. Don't. 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 Don't retain our services. Trust me. God has blessed us. Bone merch free. You're not. I, I will lose no sleep. But you have to understand why I say this. The reason I say this is when I'm working with buyers and sellers, I got to develop win-win. When I bring buyers and sellers together, I'm working with them both. I need to develop. You got, this is where I, again, I'm going to say it again. You have to be realistic, practical, have a strong sense of self-awareness because I need to build win-win situations for everybody. Got to, everyone has to walk away from the table feeling they won. And it's not that we're trying to cheat anyone, but we're just being realistic. All right, what is the best way for both sides to come together? So I'm not going to do that, put my name on the line, put my time and effort into it. If you think your business has $400,000 and you're still a driver and an operator, if you think your $400,000 is worth $2.5 million. Again, I go back to these people spend twenty thousand dollars plus and all this kind of nonsense for someone who is a owner operator they become beguiled by all this get rich quick nonsense and they sell them on this hood hoodwink dream of four hundred thousand dollars you could sell for 2.5 million no you flippant can't it is stupid and unrealistic as the person suggesting you can get a ten thousand dollar per month client you can't it's absolute crap. Folks, I know I went way over because, hey, I get animated and I could run forever. But guess what? It's time for the fat man to eat. So fat man is going to go eat. And um, maybe I'll have time in the future. <laughs> I know I will at some point in time, but I got a busy schedule ahead of me. I was down south for a while. Um, to work with some of my uh, uh, some of my peeps in my broker business because that's booming. Look at the, this supply chain. This supply chain. Take a look at this picture here. I'm gonna have my guy put this picture up. Take a look at this picture here. This is oh, this is one of my contractors who um, started with the box truck. He was working at a, a local company, making I think he's making like 40, 45 a year. Started with us part time. Started off, uh, stacked his chips. Started off renting a box truck. Then he purchased a used one. Still has that. Still operates it. Then he got that used truck. Here he is in this picture. Just got this trailer. Just got this trailer. This cat is gonna. I mean, he's, he's doing seven figures now. I'm sorry, six figures now. Making over a hundred grand a um, a year, this dude is happy as a clam. Business is double. One of the questions we always get is, is why why would anybody want a broker? Well, the thing is in this industry, I'll give you an example from both sides. If you're going to do work with a business, a business does not want to herd cats. That that is the purpose of you, the broker. You are the cat herder. A business doesn't want to herd cats. They don't want to, a business does not, if I'm a, a retailer, if I'm a manufacturer, a lot, we're doing a lot of work. We're doing a lot of sub work for a lot of freight. And, uh, and I, you know, people have always, over all the years, they've incurred, you know, and, and tried to get me involved in the freight. I won't do the freight. And um, for a number of reasons, but we do a lot of, 
sub work for them, they want a point of contact. They do not want to do the cat herding themselves. They don't want to be chasing around. They want a single point of contact. That's where we come into play. We have the different contractors. So that way they're not chasing contractors. If there's a problem, we're the corporate. We're the corporate. We regulate it for them. We regulate it for them. So that's huge. So that's why the, the, the retailers, the companies, the larger freight companies, that's why they love, love us because we herd the cats. We take care of the problem for them. Our contractors love us because we bring the work for them. And it's almost like we're their, their, sort, we're their, their, we're their admin. We regulate everything for them. We give them the technology. We regulate everything for them. And we also guarantee that they get paid every week. They're clean. They never have to perform a job and then hope they get paid at the end. Everything is paid up front. Win-win situation. But you look at this contractor. Look how his life has been transformed. He went from making forty-five, fifty thousand dollars 50000 a year doing whatever the company was that he was with. Started with us on a part-time basis. Got Eventually purchased his first box truck a few years ago. Um, has, I think it's his nephew's nephew or cousin this is, this is his main help. He has two of them, this is his main helper. Um, now nah, then he got his, his pickup truck. I mean, this guy has hauled everything, hauled everything. And, uh, life is, I mean, th th this is, this is why I say you provide opportunity for your people. It's a win-win situation. But as I digress, I apologize people for going so long, but I got to go, uh, give me some breakfast sandwiches because I'm on my last calorie. So at the end of the day, if you watch all the way to the end, you are an absolute beast. You are a beast and I love you and I love you. So until we talk again, keep sowing those seeds. They will bear fruit. We're going to weather the storm. We are in absolute calamitous times, but we are going to weather the storm. This is good versus evil and good will win. God is on our side. So until then, I'll see you at the top. Let's go, Brandon. Hey. Let's go, Brandon. Hey. Let's